Hi, I hope you're having a great day. Well, today I want to talk about the health of your lungs. We've covered this topic several times, but we need to keep covering it because there are more and more people coming up with lung diseases today, lung cancers and all of that stuff. <clears throat> yes, one of the main causes is pollution. There's nothing much that we can change about that right now. Of course, if we're environment conscious, we contribute towards making our environment better. Each one of us doing our bit will help with the environment and reducing pollution to some level, which will further have a positive impact on us and the future generations to come. But coming down to your lungs, we need to understand without your lungs, you cannot live. Our lungs have the importance of getting oxygen to trillions of cells in the human body and removing carbon dioxide as quick as possible. An efficient lung should be able to send maximum oxygen with one deep breath to all trillion cells and remove maximum carbon dioxide from our cells. When the lungs are too weak, we don't send enough of oxygen and we can't remove that much of carbon dioxide. So people feel sluggish, people feel slow, low on energy, and all of that stuff. So when people are constantly tired and fatigued, sometimes we look for superfoods, we look at exercising more, we look at everything other than improving our lung health. Because the longer we keep carbon dioxide in our system, the more sluggish, the more drowsy, the more lethargic, the more tired we're gonna feel. So, <clears throat> number one, pollution. We need to understand that, yes, there is a lot of pollution right now, but we are getting more and more cases coming in, you know, people who are cyclists, people who are doing their morning walks in a lot of pollution, people who are, you know, doing their anilom vilom, their deep breathing surrounded by pollution. Now, I understand you are doing something which is great for you, but the condition is not ideal. So sometimes when there's a lot of pollution or the pollution levels in the state that you're living in are very, very bad, you are better off not doing outdoor exercise. You are better off not doing your deep breathing outdoor possible. Every time I see cyclists in polluted states cycling on the roads, yes, commendable, you're taking care of your health, you're doing something great for you, but you have to understand that you're also breathing more deeply because your heart rate is up and all that you're breathing in are exhausts, are exhausts, pollutions, all the pollutants that come from the exhausts of cars, which will rapidly deteriorate your health. So unfortunately, we live in a world today where we have to actually measure the pros and cons of exercise in the kind of environment that we are. So sometimes being indoors is more favorable. Of course, any day, Outdoor workouts, outdoor walks, cycling and all of that stuff is far better when we're surrounded by nature and all of these things. But today, please understand that if your pollution levels in your city are high, doing deep breathing outside, cycling, running especially, anything that makes your heart rate go up means your lungs will take in more and more oxygen along with all the pollution that is going to cause some lung damage at some point. So pollution is one. Another big problem that we have is the menace of pigeons. Now, a lot of pigeons sit outside of your balcony, your window, they sit on your air conditioners, <clears throat> they poop. The poop collects in your air conditioners outside, that big box, and you are blowing in, every time you turn, in your air, you turn on your air conditioner, you are blowing in a lot of infection that causes sometimes irreversible lung conditions. Irreversible. Over the years, it is so important for us to understand. And then, then there are people where Pigeons around you don't affect you at all. But if you are that one person who has shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, constant allergies, constant lung problems, mucus buildup, you wanna get your air conditioner service, number one. And number two is you wanna provide netting, safe netting across your windows so that pigeons do not come close to where you live. Because we need to understand today that exposure to pigeons, okay, the pigeon poop, all of that can, can, can cause irreversible lung damage. Now, what do we do if we're trying to improve the health of our lungs? Breathing, it's a muscle. The more we breathe, the, deep, the more deeply we breathe, which is why pranayama is one of the most magical, magical things that you can have in your life. Not only does it help you manage your cortisol levels that cause stress, not only does it make you feel calmer, not only does it move you into a meditative position, but it also strengthens your lungs. When we do different kinds of pranayamas that suit us, we train our lungs to utilize oxygen and expel carbon dioxide with minimum effort, which means we take the burden off the lungs. <clears throat> so you could be 70 years old, you could be 80 or 90, you could be a young kid, you could be 14, 15, 10, 20, 30, 40. Try to make pranayama a part of your life. 
in the morning, in the evening, whenever you may do it. But that five minutes or that 10 minutes of continuous pranayama will strengthen your lungs. So some of us, we have no choice but to live in a city that has pollution. The only choice that we have is to make our immune system stronger and to strengthen our lungs. And that's exactly what we do. Like we strengthen a muscle by doing functional training or lifting a weight. We strengthen our lungs with good food, good lifestyle and breathing exercises. What we also need to understand, if you are exposing yourself to secondhand smoke, a lot of people say, oh, I don't smoke at all, but they're surrounded by company that smokes all the time. You are literally a smoker. It's as simple as that. Secondhand smoking is actually worse than smoking. This, this, this doesn't mean that you should continue smoking. You know, there's a filter involved in the cigarette, but when you're secondhand smoking, you're smoking a lot more, you know, pollutants than anything else, a lot more poisons than anything else. So you need to understand that secondhand smoking living in an environment or a home where a partner smokes or someone else smokes, you are constantly exposing yourself to toxins that can harm and may will and maybe will harm your lungs or deteriorate your lung function. So we need to understand, especially if you're smoking and you're raising children in your home, we need to understand that you are doing a disservice to your children and your family because you are putting them in a position of lung disease. It's as simple as that. Not just lung disease, cancers and everything else. So if we decide to take the responsibility of children's or partner, children or partners into our life, we should take the responsibility of making lifestyle changes so that we do not endanger them. And for all the other partners who think it's okay, it is not okay. It is not okay for you. It is not okay for your children. So secondhand smoke is bad. Foods as well can cause lung problems. If we're constantly eating foods that make us acidic, that accumulate mucus in our slowly, slowly causing more lung problems and breathlessness as well. Preventing infection is very, very important. There are some virus attacks that also can cause severe lung issues. So, you know, protecting yourself in the cold, making sure that your chest is covered up, your ears, you know, wearing warm clothing when it's cold outside. It is absolutely necessary. You may say, I can handle the cold. It doesn't cause a problem. But if you get infection, infection can also cause severe lung problems. So we want to take care of infections, bacterial, viral, germs, pathogens, all of that stuff by dressing appropriately according to the weather and taking appropriate action. Doing your regular checkups is also mandatory. So if you have a dry cough that continues for a long time, you have a wet cough that continues for a long time, you have shortness of breath, you do want to go to your doctor and get yourself checked. Because if you determine something at an early stage, there are so many people living with lung issues and they have tuberculosis, they have TB, but they don't even know because they've not done the test. And sometimes by the time you find out it's too late, there's irreversible damage done. So when you have these symptoms all the time happening in you, please get yourself checked up because prevention is better than cure. Now, what are some of the things, what are some of the foods that can help you? We spoke about lifestyles, exercise. You wanna improve your lung health, you exercise. The more you breathe, the more stronger your lungs are. You do pranayama, you sleep well at night because when we sleep well at night, damage that is, that is caused to our organs have the ability to heal only a stay in a state of complete rest. So sleep becomes your natural drug that takes care of everything. Rejuvenation, getting better, healing, repair, all of those things including growth happens while you sleep. Water will cause lung problems. We need to understand it's your respiratory organ. Respiration is water and hydration levels. So people who drink one glass a day, two glasses, three glasses away of water, you need, you need to understand that you're putting yourself into a very dangerous situation. So number one, hydrate. Here are some of the foods which are great for your lung health, especially if you're living in a polluted area, jaggery. Jaggery was given to people who worked in coal mines because the more jaggery you ate, the more mucus it built up broke down and people would actually spit out phlegm of black, all the soot that you breathe in in a coal mine. So jaggery is a great food for your lungs. Make sure that you're getting chemical free, 100% pure organic jaggery that is great for you. Bromelain is an enzyme which is found in pineapple and several other fruits, but it is great for your lung health. So sometimes you can even just take bromelain in a sachet form. If you have poor lung health, it will help. Apples and berries. So in our country, like things like strawberries, you know, anything from the berry family is great for your lungs, apples as well. Cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, kale, radish, cauliflower, arugula, these things are fantastic for your lung health as well. Turmeric and ginger, highly anti-inflammatory. Most lung conditions are created by inflammation in the lungs. So by getting turmeric and ginger in your daily diet, it is great for your lung health as well. 
The most powerful herbs, dried herbs that play a huge role, you can make a simple tea out of this, is thyme, that's T-H-Y-M-E, and oregano. You can buy this anywhere, take a tablespoon, boil it in water, make a concoction. <clears throat> I would add ginger and turmeric so we get all of these good things in one concoction. Drink it, it's great for your lungs. Walnuts, absolutely fantastic because of the omega-3 for your lungs. And that brings garlic and flax seeds in the list as well. So these are simple things that we can do, but all I'm trying to say is focus on your lung health because once you start losing it, it's very difficult to regain the health of your lungs. So start doing it right now, start making the right lifestyle changes to look after the lungs and the body that you've been given. Have a great day everyone, until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.